Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica and today we're going to go through my everyday flawless foundation routine. We're basically going to be covering foundation, concealer, primer, and powder in this video. For each one of these products, I go through my favorite products from the drugstore as well as my favorite higher end products so that you have options on both ends of the spectrum. And then we're going to do a demo about how I apply my base. Before we jump in, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like tutorials and you want to see kind of a series like this where I go over not only just foundation and bases but also like contour, bronzer, blush, highlight. Don't forget to give this a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video. Okay, so I feel like we cannot start a video about a flawless base without talking first about skincare. I have a couple of videos all about my skincare routine and my skincare empties, which I talk more about the products that I use in my skincare. I'll go ahead and throw that up in the cards. But essentially what you want to start out with is a fully washed, toned, moisturized, whatever serums you want, base. My everyday morning routine consists of washing my face in the shower. I don't do a super hot shower. I'd like mine lukewarm. If you take a really hot shower, you're gonna wanna wash your face outside of the shower. So I wash my face in the shower and then once I get out, I pat dry and I go in with a toner. After the toner in the mornings, I like to go in with just a little bit of um, marula oil on the tip of my nose since I have had a big break out there and it's been drying out. So the oil just kind of helps moisturize it just a little bit more and it's been helping heal it a little bit. I go with the marula oil on my nose and then I go in with my vitamin C serum all over my face. After my vitamin C serum, I go in with my full face moisturizer and then I try to let that sit for as long as I can. Normally in the morning, I jump in and take my shower first. And as soon as I get out of the shower, I do that full skincare routine. After I do that like routine and I have my moisturizer in and it's sinking in, that's when I'll make my coffee. That's when I'll make my bed. That's when I'll kind of get my outfit for the day together. I basically do everything to prep that I can while my moisturizer is sinking in because the more time you give your skincare to sink in, the better your foundation is going to look. Essentially, you don't really want to do your skincare routine, put moisturizer on, and then immediately go on with your foundation because it's not gonna mix well and it's gonna show. So after you do all of that and you're ready to sit down and do your makeup, next comes primers. My favorite primer recently has actually been one from one of my project pans, and that is the Dr. Brandt Pores No More Luminizing Primer. This doesn't really hide my pores, so I do use another primer for that, but this is an excellent luminous primer. Right now, we're in the transition from winter to supposedly spring, but most likely summer. And I'm looking for a more natural skin-like finish. I'm not going for super matte, and I'm not going for like incredibly dewy. So with my current routine, I like to go for a luminizing base and then a more skin-like satin finish for my foundation. And I find that those two work really well together. So that is my favorite like higher end primer. Um, I also really like to use the Smashbox Primer Water if I am going for a more matte look because it just gives you the, a good base to put matte on top of. Unless you're really oily, you don't want to go with a matte primer, matte foundation because it's, it's going to be too much, especially if you have combination skin like I do. The best thing to do if you have combination skin is to go really moisturizing on the primer and then go matte on the foundation or vice versa. So I love throwing this in when I'm going with for a more matte foundation or in the middle as I'm trying to freshen up in between layers, which I will talk a little bit more about later. The drugstore foundation that I really love, it's on the higher end of drugstore, but you can always use coupons. This is the Revlon Photo Ready Pore Reducing Primer. This really does reduce your pores and it's the one thing from the drugstore that I found that actually works. It's closer to $15 though. However, you're getting a gigantic jar. This is 0.91 fluid ounces. I've been using this for a few months and I haven't even like, it's not even halfway gone. The one thing I don't like is the packaging. This thing pops off really easily. So you might just want to keep it like this if you can. But this works really well for reducing your pores. I like using it right around my nose area since that's where they get really bad. And then I like to use a more luminous moisturizing primer around the rest of my face. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on the Dr. Brandt primer. So I actually just came home from work and I wanted to film this this morning, but I didn't have the time to. 
So I came home, I just took off my foundation, and we're gonna film it now. <laughs> I know you really don't have to, but I like to bring it down my neck a little bit since I do bring my foundation down my neck. Now I'm just gonna go in with just a little dab of the Revlon. Normally I would bring this up and over my nose, but due to the fact that I have a large breakout right here and that it's a little bit more dry, I'm not gonna bring a, you know too much primer onto it because I don't want too many layers on top of the dry skin there. Now that you have your primers on, once again, you're gonna wanna try to let those sink in for as long as you can. So normally once I let all my skincare sink in and I put my primers on, I'll put the primer on and then pull out the rest of the makeup. If you have an everyday makeup basket, normally you would just grab that. Maybe decide what shadows you want to use for the day. If you don't have a lot of time, it's definitely better to wait longer in between your skincare and your primer and makeup than between your primer and your makeup. So you're going to want to put the most amount of time in between your skincare and your makeup. So let's move on to spot concealing. What I've been using for this big breakout on my nose is Dermacol Makeup Cover. This is incredibly full coverage. I find that I can't use it all over my face because it's a little, or at least all over my face on its own since it is kind of intense. But as a spot conceal, it works. And what I like to do is put just a little dab. Like I'm not even gonna, that. And that's all you need for a good spot conceal and this is fairly large so what I do is I literally just tap this all over what I want to spot conceal and then I'll kind of blend out the edges into the rest of my skin like that and if I have any left over I'll go over any other spots that I have normally I'm on my period or I just ended my period so I do get some hormonal breakouts down here so I would just go kind of cover the I'm, I'm not flipping you guys off I swear I just picked that finger so I would go right there and if my redness is pretty bad I would go over that but right now it's not too bad so I'll just do it like that Dermacol is fairly affordable depending on where you get it, so I would just recommend keeping an eye on Amazon. I don't know if the actual website will deliver to the United States, and if it does, I don't know how much it would cost, but I got mine off of Amazon. I have a video where I talk all about this and another foundation I like mixing it with. I will go ahead and link that up in the cards as well, and I talk more about the challenges about finding your shade with this, but I really think the pros outweigh the cons when it comes to Dermacol. So now that you're primed, your spot concealed. What I like to do is set the spot concealing, especially when it's that large of a breakout. So what I like to do is take a poof, kind of like this. This is from Flower Beauty. I also have one from Laura Mercier. Any like makeup poof that's like this will work. I really suggest going in with a poof because we're going to set it with a loose powder. This is the best way to set a spot conceal in place as opposed to a brush where you're gonna like pack it on and it's gonna move around your product. Once you go in with a poof, you can really like mold it around where you're trying to set the foundation or the concealer. And to do that, I like to use loose powders. My favorite drugstore loose powder of all time is the Maybelline Fit Me loose powder. I have the shade 10 right now. I use this to set under my eyes. I use this all over my face to set. It's an amazing powder. They have a great shade range. Highly, highly recommend. A more recent love of mine, it's a bit higher end. My best friend actually picked this out for me. This is the Natasha Denona Invisible HD Face Powder. This is the perfect shade for me. It feels silky. It feels like cooling on the skin. And I, I absolutely love it. I'm using it every day since I got it. So normally what I'll do is take my little poof dab it just a little bit in the powder and then dab it a little bit in the lid. You really want it spread out on the poof. You don't want too much product in one spot because then you're going to get too much product in one spot here. You're really going for a super, super light layer where you spot concealed because you're going to go over it with foundation still. So let's go ahead. We're going to set the nose. And what I like to do is just 
So I like to roll over it first and then dab out the edges. And then with whatever's left over, I'll go and dab over where I spot concealed down there. And you are all spot concealed. So of course from here, we move on to the actual foundation. My two favorites right now, I have one drugstore, one high end, and the one that I've been reaching for most is the higher end one. This is the Chantecaille Future Skin Oil-Free Gel Foundation. This is quite a splurge. I kind of got it on the splur of a moment when I was sitting down and I had someone do my makeup in store and this foundation looked incredible. I don't know if it's just like the gel like formula or texture that just works really well with my skin right now, but this looks the most like skin. Like I was in a Sephora store talking to a YSL consultant wearing this foundation and she asked me, what are you wearing? It looks incredible. I need to look into it. And she had never heard of Shatakai, so I kind of had to explain what Shatakai was. I mean, the moral of the story is this looks incredible on my skin. I get the most compliments when I'm wearing this. It doesn't feel heavy. It feels light. It works well with my skin throughout the day. I'm basically a walking like Shantakai gel foundation ad at this point, but I love this foundation and it's been my favorite go-to during this kind of transition season. Not to be outdone, a great drugstore alternative that has a little bit more coverage is the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir. This shade range is not as great, but it's affordable. It's within the drugstore. It does have a little bit more coverage and it does have a bit of a stronger scent. So I do have a full video trying out this foundation, reviewing it, full day wear test. I'll throw that up above as well. But this one is also great. I like it in the summer. I like it more in humid situations because it just works so well with my combination skin in the humidity. Now that you have your foundation picked out, it's time to apply it. My favorite tools for applying these two foundations are just an applicator brush. This is a concealer brush from MAC and a sponge. This is a new beauty blender because it's all clean. I happen to have a new one and all my other ones are dirty. So here we go. It's clean for the video. I love beauty blenders. They really blend out everything. You don't have to spend the money on this though. The NYX sponge is incredible. The Morphe sponge, if you get like the really pointy one, that one's really great as well. I haven't really been reaching for my Real Technique sponges. I don't know why. I think I've just found they are just a little bit too big for me. And <laughs> that's what she said. And, <laughs> and the texture feels a little bit different because I have bought some new ones and they don't feel the same. And I don't know if that's just me thinking that because I've used other sponges and now I know what I like more or if it's because it actually changed. Either way, I've been leaning more towards actual beauty blenders. I like to scoop out a little bit of the foundation into the lid. With the Vitalist Healthy Elixir, it's a pump, so I can just pump it right onto my hand or right onto the beauty blender and then put it on. But the Chantecaille is a jar. That's the only thing. I wish this was a pump. That would be so amazing. Um, but I just brush this on. And you want to be really careful around where you spot concealed. You really want to tap it in, not brush, because you'll just brush away that coverage. Don't forget to take it down your neck. No matter how good of a shade match it is, you want your neck and your face to look the same. Okay? And now that you look absolutely insane, it's time to blend. And now we are all blended. When it comes to the spots that you majorly spot concealed, you, you wanna really avoid a full blending right on top of it, except for maybe like one or two pounces. You really wanna blend around it so you can blend it into the rest of your face. So now that we are all blended out, we've got our base on, it's time to go in with concealer. God, that sounded so PBS like. Okay, okay. So I have two drugstore concealers and one more higher end concealer that I've really been loving lately and that one is the Kylie Cosmetics Concealer. This blew my socks off. I really wasn't expecting much. I didn't think I was gonna like it. I was like, it's gotta be like just the name, but I like it. It's full coverage. It 
doesn't crease that much even though my eyes like almost always crease lasts well throughout the day the only like the only gripe I have is that it's really hard to figure out what shade you are so I have three shades of the concealer because I couldn't figure it out right now my best match is ivory the two you know drugstore ones that I have are the Ulta full coverage concealer and the makeup revolution conceal and define for the conceal and define I have two shades I like one shade to spot conceal and that is c5 and then I like to use c6 under my eyes this is medium to full coverage you can build it up it looks great under your eyes it lasts well throughout the day the Ulta one I think is it's around one of my favorites I was so surprised it's so inexpensive this is three dollars three dollars i bought it on the sale like you know buy one get one half off or buy one get one free the ulta brand always has sales Ugh. we're gonna go with the ulta one today so the way i like to apply concealer you know the way beauty gurus always do it like a lot i like to bring it down but not in a thick layer i'll try to do like the heaviest amount right on top of my darkest circles and then like spread it out as it goes out because I do want to blend it into my foundation just so it doesn't look like I have reverse raccoon eyes but I don't want it to be really thick down here because that's what's going to lead later on to creasing and breaking down so I like to bring it this far out because I do suffer from redness right around here and that's about as far as I'll bring it so we dip it in one more time and go in on the other side And I hope you can pick up on how it's thickest right in here and then I kind of let it flare out couldn't think of a better word and what I like to do is bounce out the flare first so we get a nice flare out there get a little bit of coverage down here and then using the tip go right in if you want, you can bring your concealer all the way up as an eye primer. I like to use a separate eye primer, especially since I have one in my project pan. But you're more than welcome to do that. And then when you go to bake or set, you'll just also set your lid. And we are concealed. If you want to lighten up the rest of your face, say if your foundation is a little bit too dark, you can also bring your concealer on your chin, on your nose, and on your forehead. For every day, I think that's a little bit too much, especially since you're just adding more layers to your skin. To have your skin look more natural and to really have it last and look more like skin, you're gonna wanna do as few thick layers as possible. And if you are gonna go for layers, make them really thin. Thin layers are the key. So now that we have our under eyes all concealed, we're gonna go in with the loose powder that we used earlier. And I like to do a thin bake. And you are gonna get it all over your shirt. So just keep that in mind. When I get ready in the morning, this is, getting dressed is like the last thing I do. Okay, and I also like to bake right down here. Since that's the next where I like spot conceal. And then just a little, little bit on the tip of the nose. Again, you wanna be very gentle and do those rolling motions when you can. So as I'm letting that set, I will go and then set the rest of my face with a pressed powder. You don't have to do this part, especially if you have drier skin and you want to leave the rest of it just to set on its own. But for me, I'm looking for long lasting. I'm looking to really lock in everything. So I set everything. Again, I have a higher end and a drugstore option for here. My favorite drugstore option is the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder. I use shade 4 Sandstorm. Again, the only thing that I don't like about this is the packaging. Like, I tried to depot one of these and I totally messed it up. Like, so I'm just leaving it in here in a little fake compact kind of thing. But this is an amazing powder. It's very light. It doesn't look cakey. And I can build up this powder and it won't look bad. Like, one of the best powders you can get from the drugstore. Highly, highly recommend. My favorite higher end powder is actually kind of depotted right now and it's right here. This is the powder from Benefit. It is the Benefit Sexy Mama Translucent Powder. Also love this powder. I just bought this one during their sale not too long ago and I've already hit like a gigantic amount of pan. <laughs> you can tell what I love most. Like that's the Sexy Mama powder from Benefit. This is my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. Like it's 
That's actually after like a year of near constant use. <laughs> Um, so I do love this to set the rest of my face and then down my neck as well just to kind of blend everything in together. So whatever powder I use, I like to take my Too Faced Mr. Perfect brush. I just like a big fluffy brush that's tapered because if you want, you can go and do buffing motions. But if you want, you can also use the tapered ends to kind of press into the face. So I just take a little bit of the powder and wherever you're most worried about coverage, pat it in. And wherever you're just worried about just setting it, brush it in. After the rest of your face is set, it is time to brush away your bake. So I just lightly brush. And the key is to lightly. If you're like going to dig in and do that, you didn't take away all your coverage. Take away all the hard work you just did very lightly super lightly and kind of buff it in there you go nice and light so you're almost done this is almost your perfect blank slate this is where the key comes in and that is setting spray i like to go in with setting spray as soon as i finish my base normally i do my eyes last i already had like the, my lids done from work earlier, but normally everything would be blank except for this foundation, you know, set. And next I would jump into a setting spray, a priming spray, you know, whatever I'm most into using at the moment. You can use one of the sprays we mentioned earlier, the primer water during this step, but my favorite is Fix Plus, especially the rose scented one. This is where Fix Plus really shines because Right now, you can tell like I'm wearing makeup. Like it looks a little powdery. It doesn't look natural. Now when you spray Fix Plus all over, you really wanna get every inch of your face, not soaked, but damp. And then you wanna dry it. My favorites, my favorite drugstore I actually don't have right now cause I already finished it up, but it's the Milani, it's the Milani Prep and Set Spray almost the exact same thing when it comes to this step. I think there is a difference when it comes to like foiling shadows, but when it comes to melding in all your powders, the Milani and the Fix Plus could be interchangeable. So I like to mix it up and spray it all over. And now you could wait for it to dry, but I like to use a fan. So now we're almost completely dry, but before we're totally dry, I'm gonna jump in with my finishing spray. This is the Scandinavia Makeup Finishing Spray. I have the giant like eight ounce version. This is the best prolonging setting spray on the market, hands down. They always have sales on their website. I'll link it down below. It is really affordable cause you can get a gigantic bottle and a couple of mini bottles for like $25 and they always do free shipping. So I really highly recommend the Scandinavia one. So I go in with the Fix Plus, then immediately afterwards, the Scandinavia. And that is everything for your flawless blank canvas. You are gonna wanna wait until you are totally dry, which is why I recommend the fan before you jump in with your bronzer, your blush, your highlight. But these extra steps really do make a difference. As you can see, my skin, it looks like skin still. Even though we've covered up the breakouts, the, the redness, this really is like my go-to foundation routine. And it did seem like a lot of steps going through it, but in the morning I can get through this in like five minutes flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish drying up and then we'll come back with my face totally finished. And this is my final makeup look for today. I'm keeping it really neutral, really soft, went for a nice, deep, warm lip. This is the Jeffree Star Velour Liquid Lipstick in Leo. I just love, I'm feeling a really dark statement lip with neutral eyes lately. Not sure what it is, loving it. 
On the rest of my face, I'm wearing the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer as the bronzer. My blush and highlight are both from the Too Faced Natural Face Palette. The blush that I'm wearing is Pink Sand, the one right up here. And then the highlight is Satin Sheets down here in the corner. Blinding. I'm absolutely loving this face palette getting a whole lot of use out of it like more than I thought I would and I'm really glad that I was able to pick this up. So that is it for my flawless foundation routine and tutorial. I really hope you guys like this. Let me know down below if you did and if you want to see any more like in-depth tutorials like this with different products and different recommendations both high end and low end. If you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up it really helps us out and subscribe so you won't miss any of my future videos and I hope I'll see you in my next one. Bye.